team as well. So I'll hand it over to them. And if you can introduce yourself and your team members as well. Okay, okay, hello everyone. Good morning. Selamat pagi. I am Oknovalia. I'm from HIPS Indonesia as a presenter to introduce you about HIPS Indonesia. Okay, HIPS Indonesia is established in 2020 and registered by law as Kaslan Digital Indonesia. As you can see, oh sorry, uh, you can see this in the left. Uh, this is our logo for HIPS Indonesia. And this, uh, in the right, there is a logo of Kaslan Digital Indonesia. We have a vision to become an innovative global health organization by utilizing the sophistication of communication and information technology and to play an active role in scientific development through research in order to advance the quality of Indonesian public health. And in HIPS Indonesia, we have 24 team members. Uh, there are six female and 18, 18 male that are divided into development and implementation team. Okay, we have two offices. The first office in Jakarta and the second office in Mataram, Lombok. And then for the implementation area, we have two implementation in Jakarta. There are Ministry of Health and the KI Jakarta. And then we have in Malang Regency, Bali, NTB, Makassar City and Maros Regency in South Sulawesi. Okay, this is our partnership. We have partnership with the Ministry of Health Indonesia and we have a partnership with a Public Health Office of the Kai Jakarta, South Sulawesi, West Nusa Tenggara, Health Polytechnic of Kartini Bali, Public Health Office of Denpasar, Malang Regency, and Makassar. Okay, next. Okay, this is our project. We have an EPI immunization, facility profile, COVID-19 contact tracing, national strengthening in country implementation, and the last is DG Health Space. The first for EPI immunization, uh, we, are, we are being implemented in the KI Jakarta. The point of entry is health facilities level in a monthly basis. So the data is collected by aggregate. Okay, next. Uh, for the facility profile, uh, this facility profile we made <coughs> sorry, to show the identity of Puskesmas, or we call it primary health care. In Indonesia, we call it Puskesmas. And uh, this identity of each Puskesmas will inform that refers to Ministry of Health Regulation number 31, 2019. That we made it uh, from Excel for the precise Excel app. On a spreadsheet, and then uh, we import it and uh, we make it into the system. And then for the COVID 19 contact tracing, uh, this is for the hardware surveillance. And the data is from NAR and integrated with this uh, DMK, we call it DMK. It is for uh, the portal of the health worker information in Indonesia. And this is uh, still in progress for the making the metadata for attribute uh, track entity, attribute options, and data element. And this is for the national strategy country implementation. We have Maris One data, then Pasar One Health data, we, we call it direct, and NTB One data, Makassar One data, data warehouse in DKI Jakarta, One Health data, uh, we call it ASDK. In uh, Ministry of Health, we have SSMA Malaria in Ministry of Health too, and Sears Yankes. Uh, this is for Mars One Data. Uh, the point of entry is health facility level, and it is a report month, uh, monthly. And for the pasar, one health, uh, direct, we call it direct. The point of entry is district office, and the health program uh, focusing on dengue. 
TB, HIV, rabies, malaria, and etc. And then for market sarung data, uh, this is uh, the point entry is with the smart level and village. And uh, in Makassar, it's requested support from uh, Indonesia to make new program. They, they want to make a new program named Sekolaki. And they also need uh, our support. And then for the NTB1 data, the point of entry is in the district level, uh, which is half the Poshadu uh, dashboard. This is for the village. And then nutrition dashboard. Uh, Casga dashboard and non communicable and um, yes, non communicable disease dashboard. For the nutrition dashboard, uh, in NTB is focusing on something because there is a lot of something actors, so that they are also focusing on that. And in the current health data in Jakarta, is the point of entry is the Skesmas, of the uh, sub district, district, and also province. And in IS data, this is the one health data from Indonesia. This is the project for this, uh, Minister of Health. There is the point of entry is the smart level, district level, and province level. Uh, this is helping the team, Minister of Health, for integrating the data from, uh, from the finance too. So this is uh, one, one data of Indonesia. And for the CSM, this is uh, for hospital, only for hospital level. That um, Sirsiankes Sir is conducting training for metadata and visualizing dashboard. So this is uh, only for the hospital level. And uh, for the national strategy, there is a SSMAL too. SSMAL is a malaria malaria uh, platform that we made uh, that implemented this too. Uh, the point of entry is in the Puskesmas level district province and national level. And uh, we developed it into three platforms. There are mobile, web, and desktop. You can see as uh, our, we have the poster for the Sysma, you can see at the back. Okay, next. And the last but the, not least of our product is Digi Health Space. Uh, Digi Health Space is an online learning platform focusing on health data and system. We made this because in Indonesia, there are also periodic uh, change of the human resource so that uh, sometimes we need to conduct um, training multiple times that may uh, in a lot of um, finance that we must to spend so that we can uh, we make this to make it easier for the health worker or resources to learn about the health data and system this is free for access for all the content and we made it with bahasa so that uh, Indonesian people will easily understand and you can access it into the edge at indonesia.id. Okay, maybe that's all for Indonesia. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Wait, 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 wait. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Uh, uh, Sorry, I think we're okay. Um, so I'll invite the next group up so we can have uh, our colleagues from Pakistan. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure uh, to be here um, and it, it first uh, Asia Hub conference and I'm thankful for the organizers uh, who have been pretty busy in getting us here. Uh, my name is Adnan Rashid and uh, I'm meeting his Pakistan. Uh, Um, we are recently established this. Uh, we were established in November 2021. 
Um, and right now we are currently supporting Pakistan. Um, we are a set of uh, you know dynamic individuals uh, from software engineers to DHI to implementers, uh, research officers, uh, admin and finance, and we have also started taking interns uh, into our um, uh, office. Next thing. So uh, this is uh, a brief introduction to the team. Uh, University of Oslo has been very kind uh, to basically provide us uh, a, a sport at Pakistan. Uh, they have their Zubair Asghar Raja, who is basically a core developer, and he, he basically based in Pakistan and, and is very closely working with us. And thanks to University of Oslo, Ula, and us. Um, and other than that, we have um, developers and uh, developers and uh, uh, Arsalan and Sunlight you can see stand. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have two senior developers and implementers from this Pakistan. Other than that, we have accounts and uh, admin person with us. Uh, we have one DevOps engineer uh, that's, that's not here. Uh, uh, then we have two research officers, um, and I will share about that. Currently, uh, we are supporting a number of uh, projects, although it's maybe just one year old, but, but uh, we have been forward with uh, a number of projects. We are very closely working with the Ministry of uh, National Health Services, Regulation and Coordination. Um, and I'm very grateful uh, to uh, the delegates from the ministry who are here, uh, Dr. Sabine and Dr. Hassan, and then we are also uh, very closely working with the uh, Ministry of Punjab and uh, Mr. Farooq is here from there. So um, we are supporting ideas on indicated disease surveillance and response, uh, which was developed by National Institute of Health. Um, right now, currently, we are um, uh, they have, they have activated around 54 districts uh, with the support of ministry. Uh, the NIH is uh, rolling out uh, uh, this IDSR system into the remaining 100 districts. Uh, so they are collecting data on around 33 priority degrees, and later, uh, uh, I guess tomorrow, uh, uh, the ministry will be presenting uh, a detailed presentation regarding how we implemented the IDSR, how it all started. And, uh, where we are right now. Then um, another success story, a great success uh, from the province of Punjab. Um, Mr. Farooq is sitting here. We were able to, uh, Mr. Farooq and his team, uh, along with the Ministry of National Health Services, were able to uh, develop uh, this HMIS in Punjab. It, it rolled out in, uh, it activated around 100% of districts. And around 4,500 health facilities, they are getting reporting reports from their day on daily basis, um, which is good, and down from the health facility level up to the provincial level. Uh, then we have uh, HMIS uh, in Sindh province, um, uh, which is the second largest province in Pakistan. And uh, we have almost completed the pilot, and, and we are planning to roll out uh, just like following the last process. Uh, we were also engaged in the flood response system um, uh, just for the disease coverage part. And then we have, we have with Shuraji and his team were able to uh, develop a dashboard for the flood response uh, that is now active in the Prime Minister's office. And um, we are actively supporting uh, the activities related to flood. Then we have a nutrition and debate reporting system that again. Uh, we rolled out as a vertical system by UNICEF and we are supported that. Yes. Right now, we are um, uh, in implementation phase uh, of TV Tracker. It's, it's going to be the first of its time. Uh, we are mixing the private and public health facility that all of the data, the nationwide TV Tracker, will be implemented in Pakistan. It's, it's a great challenge, but, but we just started the pilot. and. Our colleagues from um, the National TV program and the private part of our school are here, and they will be presenting tomorrow a uh, more detailed version of uh, the presentation of what, where we are and um, uh, what, are, what are the current stages. So, uh, 
then um, following the footsteps of Punjab and Sin, KTK Romance is also going to roll out uh, its HMIS. Uh, if we talk about um, uh, what are the upcoming projects that we have foreseen for now, it's Lochistan, uh, uh, Rakhashi, and Native Kalkistan, they are, they are in the pipeline of rolling out real HMIS. Uh, we are being supported by the Ministry of Health, um, and we are, we are basically supporting those provinces and the federally controlled areas to roll out their HMIS, just like the Punjab is. Uh, talks are also being made uh, to uh, roll out uh, or at least uh, start a pilot for API. Um, we have a lot of changes in the administration of API program. So we have presented um, this idea to them why not everything is now DHIS2. So let's, let's start API um, uh, on DHIS2 and, and they have been very much operative and they have been listening to us. And, and this is something that we foresee that we can achieve in the future. Yeah. And then the possible integration with other systems. So, so there are uh, basically uh, uh, just a snapshot of uh, uh, the partners we are working with. We are working with the Linda Gates Foundation, uh, Ministry of National Health Services, Common Management with Pakistan, CDC and Dalka. Global Fund, uh, Punjab Health Department. Uh, we have also had a couple of meetings with the Ministry of Education because DHIS2 is, is, is now being portrayed as the DPG. So, so not only health, but, but we, we, uh, DHIS2 is also being used in the education sector. So, so we started um, advocacy um, for Ministry of Education. Uh, we are also working very closely with UNICEF uh, for their implementation of HMIS. Uh, we are also hosting WASH and MMCH programs to be included in DHIS2 and WHO, of course. Uh, so, I mean, although we are a new group, but we are committed and well positioned to support Pakistan, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Any questions? Thank you so much. Uh, and then his team. Um, I'll just pass now for his Sri Lanka. Hi, Carl. Good morning, everyone. I just did it. Uh, John knows the slides. Uh, I'm Paul, I'm representing uh, East Sri Lanka. So uh, we have uh, one of the uh, founding members of the East Asia Hub, and we have been operating in the uh, Asia region for the last uh, so many years, uh, supporting the other countries, which uh, I'll be explaining in this presentation. Right. And so uh, we have a kind of a diverse group of uh, experts in our uh, history and group uh, coming from a medical, meaning like uh, doctors, medical doctors with a health informatics background. We have some public health experts as well as IT professionals. So uh, in all of the projects that we engage, we try to identify uh, what type of resources we require because some of the projects uh, need some medical inputs and then uh, in most of the projects that we deal with, especially in the health sector, uh, we need implementers in like 80-90% of the projects. Like as many of you are aware, DHIS2 is kind of a no-code language, meaning you don't really need uh, developers, we can do basic implementations. But uh, when it comes to advanced implementations, we want to shall mention in uh, the next slide, we need developers integrated. Right? So the thing is, uh, uh, we have few of them uh, who are in our team, but not many, and we don't really need many. Simply because of who we are, we are at least Asia Hub. 
So in Asia, we have so many resources, old resources, we usually uh, collaborate with them. And we also work very closely with the University of Moscow, meaning like, uh, that's why like, uh, if you just ask, I mean, you may be having so many questions like, uh, there are these groups presenting and you may have been approached by other partners or organizations who are doing the HIS related uh, stuff. So what's special about this piece? Because we are a network. So we have mentioned, uh, uh, I mean, the history of this network uh, and how many nodes are there which are spread across the globe. So these nodes are kind of uh, feeding back into the development of the platform as well as implementation. So that means we don't really need a very big team in each of the countries that we support, but uh, just enough people so that the uh, countries can sustain. Uh, so we uh, established ourselves formally in 2017. And we have been, most of our senior members have been supporting DHS to work in our country, Sri Lanka, and many other countries for, for probably last one decade. Uh, we are based primarily in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, and we support uh, implementations in several countries in Sri Lanka plus Southeast Asia. Next slide, please. Right. So, the countries that we support, we have three countries that we are directly providing support, which are Sri Lanka, Timor Leste, and Maldives. And also, with the collaboration uh, with the University of Moscow and our colleagues in the Pakistan team, we also support some of the implementations in Pakistan. While uh, this Pakistan team is the uh, closest to the, uh, to the implementations in Pakistan. They are working very closely with the institutes and other partners. We just provide uh, whenever uh, some regional support is required. So, uh, projects in Sri Lanka. So, the first one, I just mentioned a few uh, sentences because there are enough publications and material available online, and I have a few presentations on COVID. So, uh, I take pride in mentioning, uh, not because I'm from Sri Lanka, but because I'm from Asia. Like, Asia was the first region to implement uh, DHIS2 for COVID. So, we started uh, using DHIS2 for COVID uh, in January 2020. Right? So, we were the first country to implement something on DHIS2, which we did not just uh, do it with our, you know, like our team. We had a lot of support from all the partners in the Ministry of Health and other ministries in Sri Lanka. And uh, especially to mention the University of Moscow and all our regional partners, right? So, uh, that's how we were able to, you know, like do something in the Asia region first. And it was quickly shared that you had Asia, Africa, and so many other regions adopting uh, the DHS2. When it came to vaccination, we were ready with something by the end of 2020. So when the first stock of uh, vaccines came to Sri Lanka, we had something in place. And so many other countries in the region, uh, we had, I mean, like, for example, Jordan was the one who was with the most of the traffic experience in the region from his Vietnam. So he was working very closely with us, helping us configure it with uh, uh, the, the biggest tracker implementation we have ever done, and one of the biggest in the DHS2, because we had the entire country population, which is close to 20 million, we had to enroll in DHS2 and start from the day one in our vaccination implementation. And even when it comes to uh, certificates, uh, I'm happy to mention it was the Asia region who did a lot of innovations, so we did some work with uh, working. Uh, uh, with the integration with another digital public group called IHO, uh, which was able to provide the QR based and cryptographic and verified the QR codes, uh, which were uh, printed on certificates. And then uh, this Vietnam team, parallelly, they will be talking about it in during their presentation. They also did some innovation. So we had a kind of, so Asia was leading in, uh, you know, like all these public certificates. And then, of course, uh, we have a few other projects. These are kind of General DHS to customizations. Uh, uh, currently, we are working on one is federated at surveillance. And then, of course, nutrition information system. That again is one major innovation on custom Android application we designed in 2015. So now we are like, using it for seven years. And now, in the process of redesigning this uh, nutrition uh, app based on the Android SDK, some new thing in DHS2, uh, we are having Android SDK. So we are presenting this application and in the uh, process of piloting it. Next, please. Right. And then in Sri Lanka, especially, the thing is, all these DHS2 implementations are run by the ministry. So you mentioned, I don't have any idea about what is there in this system. 
So we did capacity building and industry customizing, industry uses it. So uh, we were mainly involved in industrial customizations. So thereafter, uh, our involvement has mainly been whenever they need support. So I don't know what's there in the system but after like uh, getting involved uh, myself uh, for like four five years back. But from time to time, whenever there are issues with these systems, we provide support. And one new area, probably some of you have heard, is the DHIS 2 for education. So um, one area we are looking at uh, in general as, uh, as a region, Asia is, uh, right now we only have Sri Lanka who is having a solid implementation on DHIS 2 for education, but Africa is leading. Uh, on education. So, uh, probably by next year, when we have the next conference, I think we can have few more countries in the Asia region using the HS2 for education. So, but again, it's the same approach. Uh, it's the Ministry of Education who's working closely with the University of Oslo. And then uh, through the University of Oslo, we are getting uh, engaged to support them in building capacity. So, they are customizing their system, uh, working very closely with us as well as the global, we call it e -mix. Education management information system sector in the DHS2. And also, we engage ourselves in building capacity. Uh, these are in country capacities. Now that uh, this is the first uh, in person academy we are having in the region, so we are looking forward to having many more academies. I think uh, Shurajit will mention more about uh, the possibilities of uh, academies coming up in the region for 2023. So, we uh, host in country academies as well as uh, regional academies. And uh, we also support local DHS to Next please. Uh, the next country is again Timor Leste. So uh, we have been engaged uh, with Timor Leste mainly of supporting uh, malaria education space uh, from 2017. Uh, but in addition, especially during the COVID, uh, we, we had a lot of support from the WHO country office. Uh, especially in implementing uh, uh, the COVID vaccine system uh, for aggregate as well as case based. So that's uh, one area. And in addition, uh, we also support uh, HMIS through again with uh, collaboration with the WHO country office in the uh, So there's also uh, ongoing work uh, related to KD, malaria, and HIV. They are, they are working uh, closely with again with the WHO country office. Next, please. Yeah. So, uh, the country that we are currently having a lot of uh, new developments coming up is this tiny country in the Asia region, one of the smallest uh, called Maldives. I hope all of you are there, even though when you look at the Asian map, uh, a map of Asia, you can't really figure out where Maldives is. You need to zoom in uh, into the Indian Ocean, close to Sri Lanka, and you'll find it. So uh, there, of course, uh, last year we have been supporting the ministry in, uh, with the aggregate system. So they have HMIS. Uh, with many aggregate forms that they have uh, developed over time with support from um, our based community. And then this year, um, we have been mainly involved in uh, implementing this comprehensive immunization system. So, why I mention as comprehensive, you will get to hear today after probably after lunch break or week. Okay, kind of like, we have a separate session on immunization where the Ministry of Health all this will be presenting on their system. Where we have many components like uh, immunization registry, uh, BBD, AEFI, and custom registry portal. So, and, and, and even some integration to another reporting platform called uh, which is Flow, global reporting platform. So, all this uh, will be something after the uh, lunch break. Uh, so, a lot of uh, exciting stuff that is happening there. And in addition, we have been also engaged uh, uh, with building capacity on DHIS2. I must definitely mention all this is possible because uh, the support of the WHO country office in leading these activities in the last two years, and they have all other UN partners, including UNICEF and many others. So I won't mention any specific names. Next, please. So, Pakistan, Arthur mentioned all about it. So, we are just providing some uh, side support, a regional collaboration to all the work that, that is currently happening in Pakistan. Uh, mainly in uh, property society, but it is Pakistan thing. Next please. And the other activities. So uh, we have been supporting uh, activities, regional and global, uh, both in health as well as EBIS. EBIS again is DHS for education. 
And then it's some research activities uh, with collaborations from a uh, couple of faculties in the University of Toronto as well as the University of Boston. And uh, we also support uh, as resource persons in masters and MD programs conducted. Masters and MD programs in health mathematics conducted by the University of University of Colombo. And also uh, another key engagement uh, we do is to uh, collaborate with the global uh, networks. Uh, one such network is uh, the Digital Public Good Alliance. Uh, where you know, like you all know, DHS2 is the DPG, the Digital Public Good. Uh, one of the leading digital public goods, uh, but then uh, there are a lot of other DPGs that we are trying to collaborate with, uh, especially targeting uh, UN's uh, objective or goals in achieving uh, SDGs by 2030. So that's it from my side. Any questions? Thank you very much to the panel this I'll just ask that this combination Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, me first. So, I am Mohammed Abdulman Khan, I'm the team leader, acting as the chief executive of the Bangladesh. And uh, I try to present Bangladesh achievements on DHS2 and what kind of support we're providing to the Bangladesh, other than other countries. Next. Miss Pamela Foundation is a foundation, it's a not for profit, non government organization. It's uh, registered by the Joint Stock Register of the Companies and Farms. And this foundation is uh, subject to support Bangladesh and all countries, all other countries who need help and match with our expertise. Oh, wrong version. Oh, <laughs> we've got the wrong version, John. What? Well, the letter of the the update slide was updated. This just thinks you uploaded. Okay. Um, Let me just like okay. Give me one second. Yes. So uh, here with my two colleagues are here. So uh, next time I'm going to talk, introduce my team. So our uh, one of the team members is Moeda Rustam. He's a he's a he's a DHS implementer, DHS trainer, and working with the HIV projects. Uh, then Mr. Nobiuta, who is a development specialist, uh, is a expertise of the API and. Uh, Uh, we have a, a team of actually separated by three groups. One is the core team, which we are. So we have one. Mr. Mabirunda, Mr. Moedun, Mr. Sam, Mr. Uh, uh, second person is Mr. Kajish Shwadul Islam, Mr. Naim al Mr. Uh, Sheikh Nizar Jamutin Lincoln, uh, Mustafa Nubayalam, and Parvis Rahman. These are the four group, four team members. We have a, a team of consultants which are uh, working on the other area, uh, so helping us, the school of consultants, and two 
The less food the one is supposed to work with, which are six artists. Uh, he is uh, basically supporting us the big data analysis and artificial intelligence area. Uh, another person is Hasan Ahmed, is a data production expert. Uh, also, we have a pool of four a former director and director general working with us on the health information system, specifically on the policy support, health, uh, those guidelines, and also the various guidelines of various diseases and others. And so, there's a four person. Is a professor Dr. Abdul Kalam Ajayar, uh, Benzer Ahmed, Professor Rajiv Ahmed, uh, Dr. Iqbal Anwar, and Dr. Andrew Zoman. Those four personnel working with us as well as a potential basis. They're not the regular team member, but whatever you need, we bring them for the end process. Next, please. Next. So, our core, our team expertise. The core expertise is the DHS to definitely, and that's why we are here. But besides the DHS to core expertise, we are also supporting an open MS class, which is a partial of the Brahmi implementation. Inside, we are also have open edits and other information, ODK, Power Toolbox, Open HA, and we are also supporting the server process. Next, please. So, our key achievements. So, we are very proud to be made as a DHS2, the core national HS system of Bangladesh. So the Bangladesh Health Information System is based on the national DHS2. So this includes 550 secondary and 4,500 primary facilities. And we also supported the established achievement systems from all these 20 good less than. Established the DHS2 as a national community of HIS. There is nearly 13,410 facilities. So these community clinics are all over the country up to the community level. Uh, so those community clinics are basically providing MNCH services at the community, and this is one of the largest tracker we have, started from 2013. And for mother and child, the total combined entity is 30 million. Uh, we, our expertise, we develop the expertise of our Minister of Health and Family Welfare so that they can build and take care of the system by themselves. So already we are handing over to major research to the ministry, so they are maintaining, we are supporting them if there is any, if there is any problem. For example, if they have an issue with the features to support maintenance, they will support. If there is a Russian upgrade, they will support this way. So major to instance, we already handed over to them. Private and NGO facilities also reporting to the research system. Because many countries we saw the public facility is there on their own. There is no private NGOs are reporting. But in Bangladesh, we can match NGOs, private, everyone is reporting to the one single national system. But there is some issue, for example, heater already. Many still has their own system. So that should be addressed in the next subject, the COVID. So COVID surveillance is a very good learning for us. Uh, we took the global COVID package as a whole system and we built upon that our COVID surveillance system. So one of the major achievements is the COVID surveillance system is the one single system in Bangladesh which is providing all COVID data. So all COVID information, COVID test, COVID certification, airport integration validation, scientific validation, COVID vaccination reporting, and vaccine logistics, all is in the same list. So we will integrate the one system to pick out. COVID vaccination is a different system because we know that our population is enormous, 116 million people, and we vaccinate 130 million people. And not a single dose, up to the third dose, we vaccinate. So this is enormous data. That's why is we put it a different instance, different system, not DHS2, but those data we are doing the DHS for reporting. So that is. Done by the same COVID surveillance system. And the COVID surveillance system itself, we have uh, 40 million entity for the testing. So one person has many tests, so test results are there. So this is the one of the highest loaded system after our common entity, because the common entity has 30 million and 1.3 billion dollars. Next is
So we also develop the capacity of the partners, not only the government. So we develop the capacity of the uh, INGO, NGO uh, development partners. And so they have can run their own piloting and other testing sites. So already there are similar 17 pilots are there, running with the various partner related organization, including them as UNICEF, ICDRB, SSR Children, Drag, IPAS, Simpid. So I have their small on piloting instance for the test and ask us to integrate with the national systems in Bangladesh. So that's why we try to bring all people to one system to integrate with them. Following national and international standards and IT systems, uh, we uh, interoperate with standards and data sharing between the multiple external systems and portals with the aggregate data. So from COVID is a good example. Well, the data source is one. They all COVID come to one place, but then generate four dashboard. One for public, one for in local language for the general people, which is not as epidemiological exploration, just few numbers, and one for the prime minister herself. So prime minister and her cabinet have a specific separate requirement. So we put the separate dashboard for her and the cabinet because that got some sensitive information and some focus. So that is not publicly available, but it's restricted that's for the prime minister. So that's why we put several of them. And internal of the issue, because when we start for the COVID, this becomes the various labs have their own system, how to build big data. So we put a common gateway with certain API. So we use the DHS token and mix it with our API stacy. So that's actually push and pull the data from the our systems. Similarly, we have the process of debt module where we actually do the similar thing. But there actually all private facilities also entering data from there because there is also many deaths in the private facilities, so they have to send data to us. But then in that case, we use the DHS to WHO NCCOD forms and the systems where we break the data from the private and public and NGOs. We also build the immunization registry, and immunization system is the first system we build. So we built the immunization in 2012, and actually the full country implementation is done in 2014. Uh, this includes the mass vaccination, online micro planning, vaccine logistics, and immunization reporting. And we have a presentation this afternoon on this. And we hope we can, we can give you the more information on that on the time. We have the five major instances because of uh, the subject issue and the load issue. So we actually divided the whole country into five instances, and the five major instances with the running the country system very well. So our performance is five for one six because this come the recently for our uh, census this year. So now the population is actually one hundred sixty five point one six. So. For that, we uh, have five years old. The national HI system is the oldest system we established in 2010. But we are not developing hundreds of tens of systems. We try to build one system, bring data in one place. But this act as a data warehouse. The second one is the national community HIS launched in 2013 with the DHS to tracker. The first DHS to tracker we started to use, and we have to take a lot of hassle. And also providing university wants to a lot of hassle as well. So giving them feedback and uh, this is a problem we have to solve. It. So that's and uh, you are always very kind enough to support us on all those projects and we are really making the community HS systems working very well so far. Uh, third largest system is the COVID surveillance system, which is a screening and testing with a single core system facilitating public and private facility directly HS2 through middleware. And through API. The another big system is the surgical and test sensor screening referral and treatment system, different follow-up system based on the DHS2. This now is implemented in 400 subject and 3,000 community clinics using this system. We are using this system and expanding it. So next year we are actually going to cover the whole country with this surgical and test sensor screening. The objective is to screen the 30 to 60 year all of them and refer to for colposcopy screening, then for the biopsy. And the 
and the treatment chain in the cancer hospital, Kashmir hospital. And all the facility and the treatment are government like free because those two cancer spread in the world. So that's we try to link, facilitate problem, and track every organ after certain period, after three years, after five years. So that's the cycle that maybe. But many is asking why cervical and breast cancer together because there is no correlation. Actually, when we pick the proposal, the research organization, Bangladesh Medical and Pongo Group, Shaikh Mujibur Rahman Medical University, the Prime Minister asked why it is very difficult to get a woman in the facility. So when she comes, what do we do the two together? They said, okay, that's a good idea. So we talked to the breast cancer group and they said, okay, that's a fine idea. So let's work with that. So that's why the track has become cervical cancer and breast cancer group. A DPD and AFI surveillance is the next uh, another instance, which is basically used for the routine immunization, AFI and DPD surveillance cases. So there are 148, 481 reporting sites, and is covering the whole country for the reporting the AFI surveillance. So if you see the our current implementation status, then it will look like this. The all greens are implementation done. The blues are implementation ongoing, not covering the whole country yet. And the white one is that, or the other one is planned to use, and the white one is actually not yet done. So if you see on the right hand side, is actually under the ministry, under the Director General Health Services. So if you see, we are starting the NCD surveillance recently, so we are starting with the hypertension and diabetes. Uh, we are also working on the CRPS on death notification and also death of the facility and the, and the viral autopsy. We are still uh, lacking on the disease surveillance. There are several disease surveillance is, uh, left. We need the uh, help of the CDC because uh, we do not CDC coordination is very difficult to get in the surveillance area. And for MNCH program, we have the MNCH track in the community and uh, also we have the media industry piloted. Vector for disease, we have the collagen and filiasis, and malaria will start working recently. So, malaria is a, you know, will be included soon in there. HIV AIDS program, we have HIV HIV program, and we have a presentation uh, after the lunch, and we have the PHCP hospital reporting as well. We have the TV control program running, so half of the running in the DHS group, and get portion, and the case based portion is the ETP manager, and from ETP manager, we are importing data to the DHS group. Regular so that is uh, our country in a one row, and on the left hand side is the urban area. So, urban area, I am also the team leader of the urban project, which is the urban EPCS EP2. So, we are under implementation, and the remaining part is under DGFP. So, there is only for the enhanced Next is. So thank you, thanks to our partner, the first day to the, our government of Bangladesh, and of course the university also without their support, we cannot move forward much. So we give them a lot of credit, a lot of problem because of the week of as a big implementation, we have a lot of issues. So we always the expert opinion, expert support. So special thanks go to the whole royal team, specifically Lash is here, also Ula. Morton uh, and also Viet is also the, here. So I actually want to thank the whole of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman and his team. I'll just now ask uh, Sora to come up because that's on his screen. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, we we'll just give a quick background of the state and the projects that are involved in India, plus the other ministries that are support, plus the funding partners also. <clears throat> so, uh, so, Cycle of Health Information Systems Program is India, but registered as a not for profit organization in 2007. 
and it's been 14 years we have been working in the data of informatics and specifically for DHS to and open OS implementations in different projects. We are governed by a eight member governing council and we do have some research projects since we also have a five member research advisory council. We have some quality certifications from ISO and we are also recognized by the government of India as a scientific and industrial research organization. Uh, we have uh, from very very small team, we have 34 people. We have around 16 DHS implementers with background with public health and information technology. We have seven software developers, uh, primarily working on DHS development, two server administrators, four implementation researchers, and we have six admin accounts in HR staff. So, to start with the projects, we are supporting the Ministry of Health. So we're working with uh, uh, the Ministry of Health in Myanmar uh, since 2019 in supporting them with the design development and implementation of DHS2 activities. Uh, most recently, we implemented the WHO dashboard packages for HIV, TB, and malaria. And we're also working on developing new tracker applications for PMGCD, mother child tracking, and PET. Uh, in Nepal, we are currently supporting the National Center for AIDS and STD Control and working with partner organizations, say the children and MHSP60, for implementing a national scale ARG tracker for 84 ARG cells and we are supporting 236 implementation partners for prevention company. Yes. Uh, Bhutan have been supporting since 2017. Uh, they have many interventions. Apart from the routine HMIS, they have a pilot program for hepatitis cascade management, HIV traffic, malaria traffic. And recently, they have also adopted the entomological services packages for uh, tracking their active control activities in uh, We are also supporting their modern health and implementation trackers. Uh, Lebanon, we have been collaborating for the past three years, uh, more on building capacity of the government country office and the Ministry of Health staff on, and carrying on to being version applications and uh, technical support. Uh, Libya, uh, we have been supporting since 2017 through our contacts with the Ministry of Health and the Regional Office. Uh, we have designed a routine health information system for them. We've been there in the country to do some workshops uh, for building capacities, and we are continuing doing online sessions with them. And currently, we are supporting the health information center for uh, extending implementation at the national scale. So, few implementations in India that we are working on presently. So, we have these DHS to based state health data warehouses. So we do have a national HMIS, which is an on DHIS2 platform, but there are certain states which are using DHIS2 for their routine reporting. In addition to the national program, they have their own specific state health programs for which they have to report monthly data. So they use DHIS2 as a parallel platform to report the data for state health programs and also parallel report the data for national uh, data sets as well. They are also in a partnership with the Nongbe India Partnership Initiative. They are the uh, organization of working on RMCS services. So they use the HIS2 for their internal program analytics platform. So they are operational in five states in India. So they supported them in setting up their analytics platform on the HIS2. Next. Uh, during the pandemic, a uh, few of the states uh, which were funded by a USA project, reached out to the center to help them develop these COVID 19 dashboards. So, we worked with these states in developing the dashboard on VHIS2, plus uh, developing these weekly uh, bulletins for the states, which were sent to the state officials, uh, the mission directors, for looking at the COVID situation in the state on a week by week basis and making the response decisions on the basis of those. Uh, we're working on a pilot project where we're trying to see uh, how citizens can be more enabled to report public health events directly from the community. So for that, we're working with USA and uh, Jabaiko, uh, who's one of the implementing partners, to develop a citizen-centric disease surveillance model where citizens could use a mobile app or uh, IPR system, which is integrated with DHS2, to make a call or report uh, a 
case based on symptoms. So basically, practicing symptomatics of the responsibility. So as soon as the public can prevent this report, reported, a notification is sent to the nearest health facility from where the person decides. And the company health officer is able to follow up with the case and take the appropriate actions to manage that respective case and do verification exercises to prevent the potential outbreak that might be happening for a certain uh, uh, We're also working with the World Bank team in one of the states in India who have implemented a, a project which they call as internal performance agreement. This is more in line with the performance based financing where they have signed contracts with health facilities and health facilities are supposed to achieve some quality assurance parameters uh, every quarter based on the national quality assurance standards launched by the government of India. So, based on the performance, the performance of the health facilities is assessed using DHIS. So, every quarter, these assessments are carried out a self assessment, then uh, extended assessment by the quality teams at state and district. And then a uh, third party sample data assessment goes to carry out. So based on the performance and the scores that the facility achieves, the corresponding amount of uh, remuneration is made to the facility. So DHS will be used to manage the assessment fees, but also take care of the financial data, which is uh, which um, the facility should get based on the score they achieve on their uh, assessments. Um, we have recently started working on antimicrobial surveillance systems. So working that with two of the medical colleges who have a large volume of data for antibiotic resistance testing. So we have developed uh, the workflow for uh, enrolling patients and uh, getting, getting the results centered for antibiotic resistance tests and then uh, generating these profiles uh, to understand what's the pattern of antibiotic resistance which is coming out of different patients against which pathogen to which sample uh, the testing was carried out. Uh, some of the projects with uh, our funding partners. So, uh, as I already mentioned, we are operating uh, with Global Fund and managing the whole East Asia Hub as part of the Global Fund Data Asset Project. And we're managing the data as to get the systems uh, assessments and working with race groups in the region. UNFPA also works in the same format. We have working with the uh, ES groups in the region to do assessments in these seven countries and we are also developing an e-mom testing assessment toolkit which could be the plan to pilot this toolkit in one of these countries uh, as we move towards the next year. Uh, we are also working with Calvi for DHS to check their systems. So we have six countries in place right now where we are extending our support. Myanmar, Pakistan, Syria, of which will be ministering in Arab Republic, Yemen and Nepal. So we have a new round of uh, funding that has been introduced more recently in July. So we are again reaching out to countries to firm up their work plans for the EPI programs and supporting the group for the countries in strengthening the existing EPI implementations. Um, a lot of projects uh, are, are coming through WHO country offices. So we have been working with different regions, uh, Southeast Asia regions for WHO. In building regional platforms for measles and rubella elimination, uh, we have also set up a health information platform for regional quality reporting and public dashboard for the Sierra region. Uh, the global FEC program, which operates out of the Sierra office, uh, they use the HIS for leprosy based aggregate reporting for quarter and annual statistics. So, 234 countries report data on a satellite instance. Uh, which has been configured for the global legacy program. And now we are moving to a case based structure in selected countries. So we are helping the CRO team in building a track of the legacy. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, with support from the CRO, we have also implemented the Malaria Aggregated Case Tracking Packages in Bhutan and Nepal. With Europe, we started DHS to Kyrgyzstan with uh, the Republic Center for Immunization and uh, that uh, with WHO support, which is now being taken up by WDCA. So, all the work is being continued there. And with Enro, we have worked in developing these regional code and health indicators reporting format and uh, an instance for reporting their regional HIV AIDS data statistics in handling manner. So, these were some of the projects in the ministries that we involved with. 
If there are any questions, please feel free to ask. If there are none, then uh, we'll be happy to support you in whatever is possible. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you to Sora and his team. We'll just ask the last group here, um, Vietnam, to come and present. So, John, I can't pull over. Hi, all. I know that we are waiting for the lunch, so I will be very brief and precise. And that we know that we have no more questions from the audience. So, this is a, not only just a conference where we are talking, but we also want to ask more questions from you so, so that we can suffer better. Um, just a few slides on the display of Vietnam. Um, yeah, let's go. Uh, my name is John Lewis, by the way. Um, from India, but based in uh, Vietnam from 2011, we've been working with the University of Oxford from 2000 when I was small. Um, I just did my graduation, did my master's and PhD in University of Oxford, then I was working in India and Africa before, and then from 2011, I've been supporting East Vietnam in uh, Southeast Asia and Pacific Islands. Uh, just to give a bit background about uh, Vietnam, uh, actually, Ula and Yong, when they started, was it was born, they were around here, 18 years back. Uh, when Ula was also an Lash, who is our the main director, we also actually worked with working in Vietnam in the uh, statistics department in getting all the data together. And then, like in 2013, we established Vietnam as an um, 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 enterprise architecture. Our, um, uh, Vietnam Co Limited uh, as a company, it's not for profit organization, so we can help and support Southeast Asia. Um, in 2008, before we had uh, established, we had an international developer workshop. Well, the first ever international developer workshop was uh, in Vietnam, in Hong Kong, one of the big cities, where all the developers from South Africa, India, and everyone came around, and this is just about how best we can try to expand. Um, later on, like after we established the first country which we worked very closely was in Laos, where like we have a country presentation about Laos uh, tomorrow, the Dr. Chang's table present. The um, Laos is very unique. I will explain a bit more about that one for later um, In 2016, uh, the University Health Program was adopted for um, like various data sources and analysis and all. So that's what we've been very focused on. Using DHS for different programs in a one instance, not trying to create one DHS for malaria, one DHS for HIV, one DHS for TB. But the, one of the whole point was just to collaborate with all the different ministry of departments and also donors so that like, we can have a one instance. And then, like, especially in the low resource country, we need to do that one. We cannot have multiple DHS. To, that means like they will be having multiple server people, multiple backups. So there are lots of additional costs when you deal with this uh, silo uh, implementation. In um, 2017, the um, Ministry of Health uh, signed that the PHS2 is a national system, both in Laos in, the, in March, and then like in December, Vietnam announced that PHS2 will be the national data warehouse system. So that gives, uh, gave a very good idea that, okay, like any data which we collected has to be stored in the HRS and all the different reporting and everything is, should use the HRS as a data warehouse. And you can use any kind of other analytical tool if the people already have to, like some places they use their Tableau to get the data in, some other places they were familiar with the uh, staff there, so they were all linking to the HRS to get all the data. Uh, we also work with the um, GSM. GSM is the Greater Mekong subregion um, in Southeast Asia, like it's consists of Vietnam, um, uh, Myanmar, uh, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, Laos, uh, and one part of the uh, uh, or two forms in China. So 
that was for the malaria, so that like, like all the people can send their aggregate data and we can get the entire picture. And this was posted in uh, Vitro, WHA Vitro data. So they were, because like, we also have a lot of like, country data sheets stored in country, but uh, because of the WHO agreement, they were all the country agreed to send their aggregate data. Similar kind of project, what we are doing right now is on recent TV migrant project, which are I am not going to explain tomorrow a bit more. Again, the same region. In 2020, um, when the COVID started, uh, that's actually the first year ever I stayed in one place for two years. Never happened, it happened in the last uh, two decades that I've been staying in one country for two years. Um, that actually uh, helped us in our, we've been working very closely with Lao and also with Sri Lanka and with University of Oslo and the WHSQ to try to create all these different packages for COVID. On um, this is surveillance, both of entry, contact tracing, vaccination, and all. And this Vietnam actually like, did a uh, few of the things on the sign and verification, which I guess that like, you also have a poster on there and the Ministry of Health and the Lao team will present on that. Uh, we created a mobile app, which is also being established. And in 2020, to support Lao, we also have a Lao office. Which uh, is uh, very close to this stuff. We have three people who have been supporting all the programs. Now is a country where multiple programs are using single DHS instance to access all the different health data. And the DPC, Department of Planning and Corporation, is heading that uh, that like all the organic population will be their responsibility. Malaria will take care of their form and their users. TB will take care of their form and their user. But they cannot change any facility name or anything. That is part of it. So these were all the agreements that we formed for quite a long time. And that has actually helped the Lao to grow in integrating multiple programs. We started with HMIs, then TB, malaria, too. malaria was a bit relevant, but when they saw, they just like went on and integrated all the things. Uh, TB joined, and now Lao has stopped. Uh, using the um, aggregate reporting in TV, they are only focusing on case reporting. Um, then HRD has joined uh, all their VCT and the ARD. So um, the process of this, we are a small team. We are 15 people uh, and two part time. Uh, people are not from here. We have five developers, uh, once the seven senior implementers, six plus one. That's what, like, what we say is part time is the one person. And we have two junior staff, admin, and the HR person, uh, Ms. Kuhn, who is uh, you all been working with to come around. We also have one accountant. And we are also very good that if you have global advisor, uh, Morpin and Viet, uh, who are actually based in Vietnam, but they've been working for US Foster. So if there's any problem, I can just directly go to him and just say what's happening. So they've been quite helpful. And all the staff are based in different, different places because we've been supporting different countries. So we need to have people based in different regions. Uh, main uh, people are based in Cochin City, which is our side now, which is very close from here. And three people have been based in Hanoi, which is the history of health. Um, and then one person in uh, Canada, so who's actually basically supporting Panama uh, to the Somanas and also uh, Latin America. Along with it, with uh, some of the code interpretation of it. And we have three implementers who are based in uh, Vincent Lab. So these are all the different countries we've been supporting uh, Lab, all the health programs, uh, including uh, uh, right from the ministry and also with the Lab um, uh, NGOs. Uh, we've been working very closely with each and every department in, in, in Lab. Uh, and I love you. Um, we also have been supporting them for quite some, quite some time. The COVID information system which was developed in Lao, then was used in Panavatu, and now the same kind of design and things to be implemented in uh, one of the countries like America. Solomon Islands, we've been supporting quite a lot. Vietnam, yes, we've been working very closely uh, with the GDPM department and also with the Ministry of uh, ICT, which is now called as the electronic and administrative department on um, and also pasture institutes and the regional institutes for creating their own data warehouse. We're working very closely with Cambodia, especially Cambodia, not as the entire program, 
start up only focusing on the HIV AIDS. Um, after the launch, the company will press us on the, the work that have been carried out on uh, using the HIV suite for HIV AIDS and disease. We work very closely also with the victim account subdivisions. This is a project from uh, Global Home. Before it was headed by UNOX, now it is headed by IOM uh, on getting the data from different countries. And these are not aggregate data, these are patient data, especially when the TB person is cross border migrant. We want to just make sure that the data is shared across and kept securely. So those are different things. So these are a few uh, key projects what we've been working on. I'm not going to go much in detail. Like in the next two days, we will go through a few of these things. One thing is for uh, COVID uh, self-registration. This is for the public. In Lao, we didn't want the health worker to feel the burden of entering all the data. So what we did was is to give public the access so that like, they can enter their personal details. And also, by doing that one, they can select the vaccination site and the stock. So that like, they can just say, okay, like, I'm free in this particular day, and I can choose these other different available stock. So that we can also reduce down the, the vaccination workflow and allocate those things. So that's what's the first thing what we did. And also we with the use of the new BDC sign and verification authority, we created um, the signing and verification system, which can actually verify the people who verify every QR code, which can be then verified both offline as well as online. Uh, based on that one, we also developed a, a mobile app, both in iOS and as well as in Android, which is currently now being used in Lao, where they download and we work very closely also with Lao Kiwas company, so that there's one QR code, but you can have multiple apps, but using the same QR code. So in many countries, what happens, like, you have multiple systems, and then you generate multiple QR codes. So here, what we said, you know, if it's just one QR code, you can use same generation and all kind of things. So you can verify whether it is generated from the other uh, app or uh, any other app, it could be same information and data is coming from the same source. Um, we are, in Lao, the internet connectivity is not so good in other places, and they have laptops. Um, then I need to say, okay, the is not trying to develop a desktop-based uh, offline system where people can do the data entry in the health center of things, and then they come to the district or hospital or district office for the regular meeting, then they can upload the data automatically to the VHS system. And you can also do the synchronization if there's any change in the forms or anything. Create a couple of dashboards and all. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Very good. So, this is the, uh, the one thing which I want, was talking about the greater Mekong subdivision dashboard. So, it's a long time back. You just see. Even the HR is uh, old. I don't even have access to the system now because this managed and maintained by by the group. So that's what like the whole idea behind the VHR is. So we try to customize the frame, and then later on, our access and the username has to be removed or disabled. And only when they have problem, like they will they will ask us. So this is entirely managed and maintained by by the uh, group. They're collecting the data from all the region. It's not one country, but multiple countries are. Reporting the data to it. One more time. Uh, this next one. So, this is just a simple, and all this was a demo data. We are not sure this is all things, so don't worry. The colors and everything doesn't make any sense. But the, the point was is that how data can be fed across from different countries. Uh, not all the countries use the DHR, so some countries use their own system. Um, only uh, it was. Um, now was the only country which used DHR uh, for malaria. That's all the countries they have their own uh, in-house uh, software. But we there was an export facility which they can export either in a, uh, XML or CSV or JSON format, and then we map those things so that they can actually import those data into DHR. And in the region, people can actually make the dashboard like this one, and also they can make a country dashboard. Similar kind of concept we've been. Doing that one for all those meetings. Next one. This was for the regional TB uh, things, but it's 
just not want to spoil uh, the entire presentation for tomorrow. The key challenges for here, especially in Southeast Asia, every country speaks different languages and different uh, letters or the, the, the code. So if some doctor writes, uh, gets a prescription from uh, uh, or a report from Lao, he can, that can, cannot be read by Vietnamese. Uh, we're not Vietnam is quite anything because the language is different. So you cannot really just share. And all the names and everything was completely different, including the hospital name. So we can't even just like say, okay, the people, the entire they have everything in Thailand, in Thailand, and in Myanmar, it's everything in Myanmar language, Myanmar script. So it was quite challenging. We'll explain about this one with uh, more with that uh, in tomorrow. I guess like it should be. And these are also a few of the things. Anyway, that we are going to share all this project of the PPT studio. I'm not going to go too much into all the projects and everything because the country will always present what I want to have in there. So we can support any of these projects. But it's good to, to hear from the country rather than from me. That's Um, thanks to John and his team. So I'm just going to ask the presenters um, if they can come back up. So that was John, Anan, Pamela, Anan, Soro, and um, from our Indonesian team. If you guys could just come back up to the front real quick. We are getting prize now. So I know there weren't too many questions from the audience, and I know typically, you know, it's our first day, we're just getting to know each other a bit. But I just wanted to ask some questions as a group, um, just to perhaps, uh, you know, help you answer some, some maybe uh, ideas, or, or plan some ideas in your mind for the next couple of days. Yeah. So these guys are all working together now. Yeah, they're one entity, and I know they all presented separately, but the idea is that, you know, they are collaborating on projects, they are collaborating on support, and if there are any questions, you can ask them as a group. Okay. So my first question for these teams is actually, in terms of working together, you know, you guys are now working together, but there's a big challenge in the countries in getting partners, uh, partners and everybody else to contribute to joint plans and even just working together. So how do you handle this challenge? And, you know, what, do you, what is your advice to them? So someone can take this on. Like it's not, and then other people can. Okay, like it's not, and other people can like at all. Um, the first thing, like what we might be doing, we might be in love uh, with the Minister of Health, because that particular time, uh, the concept of health diplomacy and strengthening was not there. Like, Gabi was like, oh, sorry, uh, UNICEF had three problems they were supporting, JICA was like two problems they were supporting, and uh, like the World Bank there had like 12, uh, six problems they were supporting. But there was no exactly a concept of the uh, overall complete support. So what we tried to do along with the um, WHO DAO and APC, we tried to just like, call all the level partners, whoever they're in the, in the country, at a meeting and we said, let's just try to do something this one up. And also let me just explain what's the capacity of the HRS to how we can collaborate and what we can actually help across the, all the health program and what kind of reports they need, they can still get it by supporting the same thing. So they don't really have to spend money in different uh, softwares and supporting in different uh, provinces. They can actually all sit down and use the same problems, uh, same place, or oh, sorry, same system. And then uh, the data can actually have their own report format, um, uh, users can they have their own report format where people are entering the same data, but like at the national level that they're looking at, they have a couple different format, but it's the same data. So I'm not having um, a total number of delivery you know, the first, they have to deliver it down and they want to charge in different ways. So that was the one of the reasons why we combined all the people together. Starting with PPC, we will have to read PPC's Department of Finance. And with uh, the uh, WHO partner, we tried to also support people. We 
call all the different donors to work together. And I know this is not possible in every country, but it's also good to have when you have a strong leadership and collaboration, not only with the Ministry of Health, but like all at like ESI, uh, like uh, the UNICEF, uh, the World Bank. So they all work together in love as one system. And then the Ministry of Health, the Catholic people were also involved for initial design of the ESRC. We've been uh, supporting, uh, we've been training a bunch of stuff in uh, lab, like 201 times. <laughs> Even like we are training the health workers, but we are also training the, all the, the people to how to use, how to access the data, and how they can contribute to the analysis. So this was the approach what we tried to get in lab or making sure all the people collaborate together. And if every property we had this meeting, then we show this is the progress, and if you want to include this particular program, and these are all the manual. So they don't ask because it was small uh, people who were supporting that bit. So like they say, okay, I want this one, I want that one. We said we made it an order. So this is the work plan. So this is the deliverable. So we will take these three projects together, and next you have to wait one month to get this. Thing. So they all understood the work workload and uh, the implementation. That was. So now uh, John shared uh, experience based on one of the countries uh, he's supporting. So let me uh, I mean, look at the broader picture. It's very conceptual. So uh, I mentioned like DHI is two as a software, it's a digital public good. And if you look across all this uh, digital public good ecosystem, DHI is two has reached some developers you right? So it's not like uh, nowadays we are implementing DHI is two where I mean in all countries, whatever software we, we implement, we have champions and Highly enthusiastic people who want to start a project. But now, DHIS2, after so many decades of implementations, the challenges we are having is that we have so many standard systems, right? So, so many partners, so many uh, ministries involved, not just say health now, education, and so many ministries try to implement DHIS2. And all these standard systems, the challenge is now we have to deal with the integration. Okay, so. Now, the main issue of all these implementations is uh, what, what is going to happen to all the resources. So resources can be time, human resources, money, right? So we, we see so many ministries from country budgets, so many partners from their own funding lines trying to do the same thing, which if they act together, tend to they have been done in a very efficient way. So this will kind of uh, save so many resources. And, about, and also from a technical perspective, right? You have this, all these groups regionally, and we have the University of Oslo who are spending a lot of time trying to figure out the kind of a mess we are in because of all these enthusiastic people who did uh, try to implement DHS2 for so many years. So now, with the majority of DHS2 as a platform, what we are looking at is kind of an integrated approach. We are at country level, I mean, we see in government, uh, so many development partners here. So, what we can probably advocate to your organizations is that. Let's discuss on something uh, kind of integrated way. So when you are adopting DHIS2 in your country, so let's discuss this. If the UN agencies try to discuss all your resources and identify your priorities and decide on a roadmap where you will be, I mean, if there are common data items, how are you going to use them? And then probably like milestones in implementing uh, some of the activities and get all the support from, uh, I mean, whoever who's available. Right? It could be your country resources. It could be the node that is working with you. It could be the region. Uh, so we are all there to support you, but try to think of an integrated approach so that we can all uh, you know, maximize the benefit of all the resources to be in good place by uh, all the donors. Uh, I want to add just few lines with Mabo uh, and John. Uh, John already mentioned the several few, step, few steps which can help the government to achieve uh, integrated health The first thing is the leadership. The leadership of the government, and sometimes it's very difficult to convince them that the good software, the good system. As a global public good, DHS2 is already reached a mature level, while we can confidently say we can use the DHS2 for several solutions. During COVID, we have the tested the, the limit of the DHS2, how far they can reach. So we have a significant volume of the data we're handling in Bangladesh and other countries as well. So we know that the DHS2 can use the amount of data. For the leadership and the mitigate the fragmentation, the one approach I remember when we started Bangladesh first, the director general asked us, 
we have, we have tense system in health, 12 system in GRP, we cannot make a publication here because there is no the knowledge system can produce a holistic picture of the whole system of a specific programmatic area. For example, we cannot produce an MSCH bulletin because we have only two pages of our meetings. So he gave us a challenge. If you can make it in six months, at least two data sets, then we can take pages. So we took the challenge, three data set, we took 481 facilities in six months. Because the HS2 is already developed, so we need to customize the forms of it. The training is easy. So training, we make the several trainings, few weeks of training, and we can implement. Now, in Bangladesh, if you go and ask a new system to implement this, we go to the DHS or put it in DHS2. Why? Because they are already habitual. So for example, COVID surveillance, we implemented it in the seven days. How? So they first test, we took the global the COVID package, customized on our need, which is one day's meeting, I sent it to the training, the develop training manual the next day, and three day online training for the country. And that is done. So, the whole country is reporting from the day seven, day six. So, that is how first we can replicate a big system like COVID in very quickly. So, this is one good selling point for the DHS2. So, DHS2 can implement and the first if they are what working with people are trained. So when your people are trained, you can reuse them for the various systems, various types of data. So that is one good point. So in Bangladesh, now many publications are based on the DHS2, many data is published, DLA is DHS2. Just keep making data use, we are using in DHS2. So this is one way as a government, we can capitalize. As a development partner, we continue to think about using the DHS as a single system or as an integrated point. Because in Bangladesh, we use the other system, but DHS2 is act as an integrated. So that's pulling various information together with the visualization. You know, one of the great the selling points of DHS2 is visualization. No other system has a visualization like DHS2. That doesn't have to be a GIS go to the thing for charts and other, you have to go to other visualization. They must have to go on this. So, for a quick goal, if you want to some visualize your work, your deliverable, very convenient is the DHS. So, that's why we are implementing DHS2. We are here to support you all. Whether you like our support, then definitely it is Asia Hub, Global List, and University of Oslo are there to stand behind you. Beside you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm just a comment and um, I'll take it later. Uh, I mean, to me, this is more than just a, a development um, a software house or something. I mean, we, we cannot, cannot only deal with the development. We have to deal with the implementation that we have to see how systems function. Uh, it's more kind of a bridge between the, the partner, the governments, even, even, even the governments or the federal governments like countries in Pakistan. We have a completely bold situation. We have um, uh, governments, uh, governments of health uh, uh, sitting at the top, and then we have provincial health departments uh, sitting at each province. So, so uh, but I have experience throughout this is that, that if, if that grid is you know computed uh, by this, it, it, it makes life easy for all of us. So 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 an integrated approach uh, as that uh, uh, John mentioned. That, uh, uh, question was like an integrated approach towards this. That I mean, at least what we can do is what we foresee is that at least the data entry for one indicator should be entered at least once, and then those small streams of data can enter into a big paper of you know, uh, data uh, where uh, you can basically post all of your systems and then they can talk to each other and, and, and share information with each other. So yeah. Oh. Okay, thank you very much to all our presenters and uh, uh, thank you very much for presenting. Okay, so it's uh, lunch time right now. So lunch is just served in the other building back where you guys have breakfast. Uh, buffet style lunch. Are there any you know um, accommodations that need to be made? How to make all the arrangements um, based on your dietary restrictions, etc. 
Um, so um, these will just go over there. The lunch is one hour long. So we'll come back here at 1 30 p.m. and start our next session. But yeah, please everyone um, enjoy your lunch. Um, we'll be happy to talk to you more over the break and we'll see you in an hour's time. And for our online participants, um, we'll be back in one hour as well, so we can take a break and uh, we'll see you guys then.